What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Meanwhile tonight, a researcher at MIT is suggesting that even in the future, more children will be born with autism. In fact, she's throwing out a number that should send shivers down the spine of any prospective parents. She's suggesting that by 2025, half of all children in the United States could have some form of autism. For approximately the past eight years, the Kremlin has been spewing anti-vaccine propaganda chiefly to the United States of America, but also elsewhere, much of Europe. I wanted to address that statement. In six years, half of the babies born in the United States of America could have some form of autism. I'm going to do another prediction. I'm going to say, in approximately six years, half of the babies in the United States born could have some form of homosexuality. Note the word could and the phrase some form. There's only one form of autism. It's called autism. There are, to use the word, different levels of autism. Autism is ranked poorly, um, diagnostically, by how much support an autistic person needs so that their quality of life and their standard of living is on par with the general population. If an autistic person needs some support, some some communication training, some uh, behavioral modification that they agree to, but not a whole lot. Um, they can probably hold a job. They can probably, you know, rent uh, housing and do a decent job living. We, the diagnostic cl clinicians would call that level one. And it goes all the way up to level three. Level three, of course, would be significant help to achieve the same on par standard of living that the general population has. These are not some form of autism. These are all autism. Let's continue. Here's the money question. Why? Right? Why? Here's uh... That just cracks me up. Why did she say that? This guy is paid by the same organization that the person he's interviewing is paid by. And he doesn't know why she's lying? He doesn't know why he's lying? Good God, that's funny. I know why she said that, or will say that. Let's see what she says. Duh. Uh. Artsy correspondent Michelle Greenstein, she's been drilling down on this all day long. What, 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 what is the why? What are you finding sure. out? So right before we get to the why, I want to give you a sense of the trajectory that we're on. Okay. So right now, at least one in 59 children are diagnosed with autism. Now take a look at your screen. Take a look at the last two bars all the way on the right. In just two years, we went from one in 69 children being diagnosed to one in 59. So a 10-point jump. This is according to the CDC's 2018 report. So now let's get into the why, because these numbers, you know, aren't the whole story we could just be diagnosing more that also cracks me up according to my waveform editor here she stated the correct answer in under a second and then she spends the rest of the so-called interview giving the wrong answer funny we know that the diagnostic rate the prevalence has been increasing the autistic rate we know has not been, and I will explain why later in this video. Um, and of course, autism comes with a variety of causes, but I'm going to narrow in on one that I think is really important, mm -hmm. and that's pesticides. So we've seen experimental studies before that suggest that uh, pesticides affect brain development and give you a higher risk for autism spectrum disorder, but now... Good God, that's funny. Notice how blithely and quickly she spews that lie, as if... If she just says it fast enough and she just oh, cavalierly says it, everybody will believe it. 
pesticides are increasing the rate of homosexuality. That is just as accurate as what this clown just said. Now we have a study examining pesticide exposure in the real world. It's coming out of the British Medicine Journal, and this study suggests, this came out just last week, this study suggests that your risk of autism increases for a baby or for pregnant mothers when they're exposed to pesticides. Hmm. Yes, there is some evidence that shows that pesticides will increase the autism rate by approximately three hundredths of one percent. Air pollution, by the way, will increase autism rate by about one-tenth of a percent. Why don't we do something about air pollution? Why mention pesticides? Could it be the Kremlin wants the United States to stop using pesticides? We know that autism is at least 83% genetic and up to 90% genetic. The rest is epigenetic. The age of the father, the health of the mother, and air pollution are the three largest epigenetic factors of autism. We know this. This is toolboxed. But what about the increasing rate? What about the so-called autism epidemic? How does three hundredths of a percent equate to half of the population in the United States being born autistic? Math doesn't add up. How about we look at autism in little kids and autism in adults? Links down below. Uh, United Kingdom did two studies, a, a primary study and then a follow-up study. I believe it was 2009 then 2011 with the follow-up study. They looked to diagnose adults in United Kingdom to see how many adults are autistic. They discovered, and it was a shock to them, that 0.98% of the population of adults in the United Kingdom are autistic. 1%. 1%. Let's look at how many, the rate of little kids being diagnosed autistic. From 1% to 1.1%. If the rate was increasing over time, if little kids are being born autistic more often now than in the past, why is the adult rate the same as the infant and toddler rate? Where is the autism epidemic? Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. 